Hello there folks, DJ Bergstar here back with another tip. So today I want to talk about your arrangement and your song structure and how important it is to follow a certain song structure and formula when you're writing some music or a track. Um, and you might be telling yourself, hey, this is art. I can do whatever I want. I'm putting together my own track. I can do it the way I want. Well, that's sort of true and not true. Um, let's compare that to baking a cake. So let's say you were putting together a cake and it has 10 times the amount of flour in it and only you know 5% of the amount of sugar you're supposed to put in there and the wrong ingredients and you throw it in the oven and bake it and it comes out and it's just a total disaster. And that could happen to your track if you're just doing it however you want instead of following a certain song structure or formula. Um, the truth is, is over 90% of all the music you hear um, on the radio or Spotify or wherever, um, all the pop, rock, EDM, country, and other styles of music, they're following this song structure or formula and they may vary it up a little bit and have the intro a little longer and you know maybe they're changing it up slightly but this song formula is what they're all using because it works um, we've been using this same um, song structure and arrangement for you know 60 70 years you know and the reason everybody uses it is because that's how we're used to listening to music and um, it just works so why fix it if it's not broken right um, especially if you're new to writing music um, you really want to stick to this formula before you start branching out on your own um, and just doing something wild you know um, so um, following this structure um, and formula here, you're really trying to tell a story and taking the listener on a journey. Um, you know, so the intro is where you're, um, let's compare it to a roller coaster ride. You know, you're taking them on a ride here. And um, this might be where they get in and they're just starting off slow here. They're getting introduced to being on that roller coaster, you know, and then the verse starts where they're climbing up the hill and they're starting to tell you a story, you know, and then the pre-chorus is where they're starting to go around that first bend and then bam, the chorus comes in and you hit that first loop-de-loop -loop and you're full on in the, you know, coaster by then. You're having lots of fun and then they um, sort of bring you back down and um, they're telling you more of a verse, you know, um, and telling the story as it goes, um, and that sort of thing. So you're taking them on a journey. Um, and how we do that in Ableton, the best way is to make markers. So let me show you what I'm doing here. So what I've done is, is this first part that you see here, this is the first verse. Um, and this is my chorus, this, this section here. So Instead of rewriting everything, um, you know you can almost copy and paste your chorus into the next time there's a chorus. And you might add, you know, some more percussion or remove something um, to change these up a bit. But you're still going to follow that formula. So what you want to do is make markers. So up here where it says set, anywhere your pointer is, um, you'll be able to make a, a marker right there. So... Right now we're at the beginning. If I hit set, you'll see that a uh, little marker showed up here and we can label that and let's name that. Um, call that intro. And then after maybe four measures, um, we'll jump into the first uh, verse here that could be, let's say 16 measures long. We'll make a, another marker and we'll give that a name see here verse one and then here we have another marker we're gonna make and this is the pre-chorus and we'll just set that to pre one and 
Then here we go into the chorus and we'll make another marker and whoops well I should call this I guess I didn't save that pre okay and we'll name this chorus so whoops chorus all right so you know we're going along here we're making markers as we go um, and instead of naming all these for time's sake I'm just going to go ahead and just make a marker without giving it a name. But we know that um, we're going to have another verse here. It's going to be eight measures long. So I'll make another marker here. And so what I'll do is, is I'll take the first chorus here. And sorry, the first verse. And we know this is the where the second verse is going to start. And then there's gonna be let's look at our formula make sure we're doing this right so we did the second verse and then we're gonna have a pre-chorus so this will be four measures long make another marker and then we're gonna have our second chorus so I can take this chorus again and drag it over here we've got that and let's look at our formula again and after that course we're gonna have a bridge which is eight measures long. So we'll make this another set there and we'll have that eight measures long. And then this is gonna be our outro here. Um, and so what goes on this bridge is subjective. Um, you know, you could be repeating something you already have or come up with something new for this. Um, let's just make that some bass line by itself potentially with some hi-hats or claps um, right there let's say that on this pre-chorus we're just going to have this sound and let's say for this pre-chorus we're just having the, some percussion going on and in the beginning we're going to extend that out so in the intro so Right away, I was able to throw together by using these markers my song structure. Let's listen to a little bit of it. So this is the verse that's playing here. And we're gonna have the pre-chorus. And you would add things here, obviously, like ramps and transition. Here's our main chorus. I'll jump ahead here. And then you get to the verse again. That'll go and then go to our pre-chorus for the next one, for the next big chorus here. Alright, we've got that chorus going. And then this is our bridge over here and you can do whatever you want with that. But it's following this structure. Having a structure can help, because that's how we're used to hearing music. And this will lead into our outro here, however you want to do that. Anyway, so it's all about following this particular um, formula when you're writing 
music, um, especially if it's pop, rock, EDM and stuff. Um, if you're writing classical music or something totally different, like a movie soundtrack, obviously you're not going to be using a formula like this. But for most music that you're hearing um, and you're writing that style, you want to get used to writing in this formula. And after a while, you don't even need to make markers. You just kind of know in your head, hey, I need a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, you know, and that sort of thing. So, um, but, you know, it's helpful to have this, um, you know, sort of at first when you're writing tracks or even if you're an experienced person and you just want to make markers um, to kind of remind you where to put stuff and how easy it is to sort of copy and paste you know your chorus to the next chorus and things like that so anyway markers is a great way in Ableton to um, tell your story and stick within this formula and have a successful song um, that works that uh, when people listen to it they um, understand what you're saying <laughs> and then you can take them on this journey and they'll follow you and have a great time so anyway thanks again for watching and I hope to see you guys on the next one. DJ Bergstar out.